Shut up and sit down. Hey guys, this is Andy from Big Mac Studio. I'm doing the second part of the Night Lord's Contemptor paint job. Now I'm starting on the metal work at the minute. <clears throat> and the first layer, uh, what's going on now from uh, last week's video, is Dwarf Bronze by Vallejo Game Color. Now this is a lovely um, transitional highlight from the Icor Lucifer Bronze and works really, really well to um, build up them layers nicely. Now I'm just doing it on um, the larger sections, the larger panels on the upper faces uh, as, it's, um, as it is a highlight and we're bringing that up from that colour to Genna's Gold. Now I chose that colour because it really works well with M2 and that's going to be the primary colour for, um, for, for the bronze work and it really brings up a nice shade. Uh, over the top of that um, bronze colours. Now from there we take it up to Auric Armour um, as a highlight and uh, then just a touch of silver mixed into it uh, for the um, major raised areas and this will bring it up to a really lovely sort of eye-catching finish. Uh, right at the top, uh, right at the upper edges, just where the light would hit, like, um, hit nicely. Now, for the skin work, we're working with again Rakar flesh. Um, now, there's a couple of layers gone onto that, as it's um, going over such a dark blue. It takes a few layers just to um, get the colour right because it starts off looking kind of a greeny colour. And when you're working with Rakar Flesh, you can, um, as with all the other stuff I've done on this uh, tutorial, keep the layers really thin um, as there's such nice detail work on the flesh, uh, flesh tones. And then taking the um, next shade with um, Karak Stone. Now that will make it look a bit more like the bone itself and I'm going for sort of a rotted flesh rather than a, a natural sort of um, freshly um, strapped on sort of flesh uh, effect. And over the top of that, uh, into the uh, darker areas I'm putting a army paint of strong tone followed by uh, an army paint of green tone into the um, recesses, just to uh, add a bit of depth to the um, to, to the uh, flesh work. With the flesh work, uh, as long as you thin it down enough, you can put almost um, as many layers as you want, and just keep building down. Um, building up most um, transitions and you can get some really interesting shades uh, using colours what you wouldn't normally associate with um, those particular colours. Now the, as you can imagine I'm putting the green tone into the um, really deep sections rather than onto the, um, onto the flesh proper. Uh, I just wanted to keep a rotting sort of lock to the um, recessed, recessed areas where it's been um, stitched together. Once it's all dry, I'm then using a mix of Rakar Flesh and uh, Karak Stone as the initial highlighted areas, bringing the uh, flesh colours up nicely. Once they were dry, I started using a highlight of Warp Fiend Grey. Now that is a purple, um, which adds some lovely texture, uh, textured colour to the um, rotting flesh. And this is the same technique as I used on the faces towards the front of the uh, This is the same technique I use on the faces on the front and side of the Dreadnought. Um, getting a very similar sort of a rotted skin effect. And the final highlight on top of that was done with 
Up Shabti. No, no, it wasn't done with Up Shabti at all. Now the final highlight was done in Screaming Skull. Just picking out the um, raised regions and making uh, the entire thing look more finished. I did a couple of layers of this um, to make sure that the uh, claws went down nice and thin. And I, um, the second layer, as you can see, is a slightly bit thicker than the first layer, uh, as I wanted to, the highlights to stand out a bit more. And the uh, plasma cannon. Now, the silvers were done in the same manner as the silvers on the rest of the uh, vehicle. Uh, start out with gunmetal and done a nice smooth coat across the entirety of the silver regions. Um, and the claws were done, started out with gory red. I went for a different sort of tone um, to the uh, eagle, to the uh, wings on the chest plate. I wanted a bit more bright, vibrant um, look to the uh, claws. So they started off with, as I said, a glory red um, and were washed down in a black um, to add a bit of depth in the detail work and uh, gave, gave a nice dark colour to them. The uh, front end of the plasma cannon was done in Brassy Brass, uh, which is a Vallejo colour, um, which is a very different bronze to what I would normally use, and the actual firing cone will start out in Lucifer Bronze. I had a, uh, an extra colour on the um, end of the plasma cannon, uh, making it look a bit more interesting than enough of having a full bronze, one, one shade of bronze across the entirety of the, um, of the weapon. Once all the uh, paint had dried, I started off with uh, Norn Oil or Army Paint Dark, dark Tones I tend to use. Both do the same job, you can use it, um, both interchangeably in my opinion. Uh, and I just hit the entirety of the um, silver work in um, the black, getting, uh, getting into all the nooks and crannies, making sure that you had a, a lot of extra depth into, into the weaponry, um, giving us a, uh, something where we could highlight from. The bra brass and bronze en um, areas were washed in um, strong tone, uh, which again is an army painter. Um, but equally, could, as, as I've said before, equally could use Agrax Earth Shade. Does a very similar sort of um, brown, uh, dark brown sort of um, shade tone to it. So once the um, washes are dried. Started picking out the detail work on the uh, silver, uh, much the same way as before, using the um, base colour, uh, which was gunmetal, uh, to pick out the uh, raised areas and to um, just tidy everything up from the wash. <laughs> Once the um, base colour set set again. I started using um, once the base set base colours are set again. I started using Iron Breaker as, as a highlight over the gun metal, and then topped it off with a bit of um, pure silver um, from the Vallejo range. Uh, just to add extra um, extra sharpness to the raised, uh, real raised areas. Now, as you can see, there's a wash going on. It's really, really thin. I'm not using uh, strong tone, but uh, thin down with um, Lamia medium, and the same again with uh, a slightly less thin down uh, strong tone 
over the top in the uh, as a more of a general wash. It's just to add a bit of a grimy effect, make it look like it's been used more than once. And making the um, model looking a bit more real. Now this is where the camera angle changes, which I have to apologise for. So I'm starting on the looser for bronze areas. Uh, again, done the same way as the uh, trim. So looser for bronze, then taken up with dwarf bronze, and then Genner's gold on the top of that. As you can see there, I'm just highlighting the, um, the muzzles and the, uh, the muzzle cone uh, with a bit of uh, gold and silver just to add a bit of a reflection from the light just towards the upper reaches. And I uh, did the same on the skulls on the, um, on the power claw. The power claw itself was done, uh, started off with gory red as I said and now I'm working with bloody red just to give it a bit of a, an extra um, shine and like, like I say just to differentiate from the wings itself and you get a really nice gory looking um, uh, power claw blade so as you, as you can tell I'm trying to stick with the sort of the night lords the sort of brooding theme uh, to the entire vehicle um, using a darker palette than um, I would possibly use for maybe Ultramarines or something. Now there was a few bits what, uh, what have been done off camera as we had to trim this video down somewhat. Uh, the purple I used was um, Xersus purple from GW highlighted with Empress Children and the green was German Army Green uh, which was done on the uh, bar uh, the tubes and pipes from the uh, plasma cannon. So I'm just doing the faces on the um, extremities of the vehicle and they're done in the same way as I did the skin on the um, shoulder and knees. I'm highlighting up uh, that purple with Empress Children and uh, then again mixed with a little bit of white just to really bring it out. I, I was tempted with OSL but I decided against it as um, I spent long enough painting the thing and I didn't want to screw it up by but, um, messing up on the OSL. And there we have it folks, that's the uh, end of the video. I hope you like it, I hope you watch some more of ours. Um, if you have any uh, comments please feel free to um, drop, drop us a message. Um, obviously like, like and subscribe if you uh, like what you're seeing and if you've got any uh, questions please feel free to ask. Thank you very much, this is Andy signing off. So there are.